Hello and welcome to another video in the Power PE series from movingelectrons.com. Our topic for today is going to be protective relaying. Now the ANSI standard C37.2 lists close to a hundred different protective relay device numbers and that's not counting the number of suffix and prefix you can add to a lot of these numbers. So as you can imagine, this is a really vast topic. What we will be doing is just covering a few of these, four of these relays in particular through this question. So let's read the question first and then we'll go into the details of each of these and see which one best fits the answer. So what we've been asked is which of the following relays uses voltage and current to measure the impedance, measure the impedance to the fault. And the choices are voltage relay, frequency relay, distance, and then differential relay. So let's start off by the first option, the voltage relay. Now, what is a voltage relay? A voltage relay works on predetermined levels of voltages. So it works on predetermined levels of A voltage. This is a family of relays within which you have an under voltage relay which has the ANSI code 27. You have an over voltage relay which has the ANSI code 59. You have the phase sequence relay, phase sequence voltage relay and that has an ANSI code of 47 and then you have a voltage balance or yes a voltage balance relay with a ANSI code of 60. An under voltage relay as the name suggests basically monitors under voltage for example at a load bus. An over voltage relay similarly would monitor an over voltage at, for example, a generator bus. A phase sequence relay would detect either a phase reversal or single phasing, for example. And a voltage balance relay, now this is an interesting one. What this does is it blocks any protection devices any devices or any protection devices connected to a VT connected to a voltage trans a voltage transformer if the VT fuse is blown is blown or basically the VT becomes inoperational so let's just for this last one the other ones are pretty self-explanatory I think just for this last one, let's kind of just draw the circuit out a little bit and see what happens. For example, this is a generator and uh, there is a VT connection to it. And there are, for example, two relays, uh, 40 and 51 V connected, which is basically a loss of excitation relay and a overcurrent relay which is voltage constraint so remember how i mentioned there are prefix and suffix you can attach to a lot of these this is a prime example for example 51 would be an overcurrent relay and then you have a v next to it meaning it's a voltage constraint relay now these vts are always generally connected with a fuse if this fuse gets blown these relays might operate mistakenly so what happens is we have another vt here and then you connect your device 60, which is your voltage balance relay across, and that would block these from operating if the fuse on this VT goes. So that's basically what the function of a voltage relay, voltage balance relay is. So we've seen voltage relay, the family of these, there are four different relays that we can basically account, uh, that can be counted as voltage relays. Let's look at the next one which was a frequency relay. So we have voltage, frequency, distance, and differential, and we look at each of them. So a 
frequency relay. Now this has an ANSI code by itself of 81 and that accounts for both an under frequency or a over frequency relay or a combination of both of these. So what this is designed to do is it's designed to protect any AC equipment, any equipment that has a frequency associated with it against under or over voltages. Now this can operate in two different operating modes. So two operating modes. One of them is a definite time and definite time and the other one is a rate of frequency change or actually you could say it can be operated in three different operating conditions either one of these two by itself or a combination of both of these so a definite time relay would be it for example if it's a 60 hertz system when you the whole uh, the frequency drops to 59 hertz for 0.5 seconds you alarm and for 10 seconds then you trip a rate of frequency change would be it would monitor how quickly the frequency is either dropping or rising and based on your settings make a decision and alarm and or trip or as i mentioned you could have a combination of both of these you could say till 61 hertz i would use definite time and after that a rate of frequency change would would kick in so that's a frequency relay in a nutshell let us now look at a distance relay. So this, the last two are relatively interesting. So distance relay has an ANSI code of 21. And what a distance relay does is, is it operates based on the ratio of voltage applied to the current that's passing through the protected circuit. So operates based on ratio ratio of voltage to current in protected circuit so i'll explain that in a bit but what what we're saying is it will operate based on the ratio now what is this ratio v by i is nothing but it's proportional to the impedance Therefore, this relay is also sometimes called the impedance relay. And if you look at a transmission line, the impedance of a transmission line is directly proportional to the distance of the line. And therefore, that's where it gets its name as distance relay. And this will become a little bit clearer the operation if we draw it out so you have a generator and uh, let's say that's a generator bus and then after that you have a uh, you have your VT and you have a CT here and they are connected to a distance relay so this is a relay that needs um, a connection from a CT and a VT both and then you have some impedance of this transmission line and then you have another bus, the load bus, and that's your load right there. So this relay would operate when the ratio V by I becomes less than the impedance of the line. So during normal operation, when there's no fault, you would imagine that what this is monitoring the voltage here and the current passing through here through the line would give you the value ZTL. That's what Ohm's law tells us. But during fault conditions, what would happen is, so you would have VI at fault would give you an impedance. Let's just call that Z fault for now. And since this is inversely proportional to the current, as the current rises, the Z fault is decreasing. And once it goes below a value of ZTL, you would want your distance relay to operate one other interesting thing to note here is it's distance relays are very good because they give you based on this value of ztl you can set your distance relay to operate at either 80 percent of the transmission line 
or you could set it to 120% of the transmission line. Depends what, how much of the transmission line you want to cover and what would happen. So, okay, let's look at, let's look at the case where the fault is out here. So if the fault is out here at, let's say location F1, then I, and let's compare it to another fault that occurs on the transmission line and that's at F2. So I fault at F2 is going to be greater than I fault at F1 as seen by the CT, right? Because that fault is so much further away, the, the fault current that's flowing here is going to be, is going to be a lot lesser. Therefore, since this value is going to be higher and it's inversely proportional to Z fault, so Z fault for a fault at F2 is going to be less than Z fault for a fault at F1. And the idea is that in between these two is the value ZDL. So your Z fault at F2 is less than Z of the transmission line and that is less than the impedance of the fault that would be at F1. And that is intuitively also, you can see the further the fault is, there's more impedance that gets added on. For example, here, if there's another transformer here or the load itself, then the impedance of the load is getting added on and so on. So therefore, this is an amazing, the distance relay is, provides a very good way to protect your transmission line. So that is how a distance relay operates. I hope the this kind of clarified in a nutshell, in an easier way as to how this operates and how this is directly related to the impedance. The distance relay also basically has two types of operations, so two operating modes. One of them being a definite distance relay so this would operate instantaneously if v by i becomes less than ztl and that's a predetermined value that you would enter in your relay predetermined value that you enter in your relay the other one is a time distance relay so a time distance relay Basically, the operating time of this is directly proportional to this ratio V by I, which is directly proportional to the impedance, which is directly proportional to the distance. So what we're trying to say is the operating time of a time distance relay would be such that if there's a fault on F3, so it's still within the protection zone for this relay. If there's a fault on F3, the relay would open slower than if there was a fault at F2. So the further away you move down the line, the time to open the relay would change accordingly. The further away you are, the slower the relay operates because the operating time is directly going to be proportional to the distance. So the operating time is going to increase as the distance increases. I hope that's clear. Okay, so that is your distance relay. And the last one that we're gonna look at is a differential relay. So a differential relay. Now this is another very interesting relay and the ANSI code for this is 87. A differential relay operates when the phasor difference between two or more electrical quantities exceeds a predetermined value. Let me first write that down and then I will explain that. So just want to give the definition. So it will operate, operates when the phasor difference between two or more electrical quantities exceeds a predetermined value. So let's try and understand this a little bit more. Let's look, for example, for a current differential scheme. So we have a current differential scheme. 
let's draw this one out as well so you have your generator you have um, your protected your equipment to be protected so your protected equipment this could be a so differential protection scheme can be used for a number of electrical equipment for example a transformer uh, a bus a transmission line even an alternator of a generator for example and then this is going further to the load so what happens here is you would connect two cts but the polarity of the cts would be such so let me draw this out and make sure you clearly understand this so you have your cts connected and the polarity as i mentioned is such that the current flow is in the same direction so current flowing here 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 and here completing this circuit what you have though is right in between here you have your relay operating coil so let's try and see what what this is what a differential scheme is all about under normal operating conditions so let's say this okay so first let's define our cts let's say this is 100 to 5 amp ct again this is 100 to 5 amp cts under normal operating conditions there is 200 amps flowing from here that's the requirement from the load so if you have 200 amps flowing in here your ct here is going to see 10 amps 10 amps 10 amps going there, 10 amps going there. This, as I mentioned, is the relay operating coil. There's going to be no currents through this because there's 200 amps flowing here and then there is 200 amps flowing out at the other end to the load and both the CTs see 200 amps, so they both have currents of 10 amps. What if we have a fault at this location here? at F1. Now this fault is for example taking a current of 1800 amps. So what's going to happen is now from here imagine all the fault currents flowing from the source. So you have 2000 amps flowing from here. For 2000 amps so for a fault at F1 what this CD is going to see is 2000 amps so we're going to see a, a current of 100 amps. And then even this CT, because all of that 2000 amps is flowing out through this CT as well, it's also going to see 100 amps and 100 amps here and 100 amps here. And once again, there's going to be no current through the relay operating coil. In this protection circuit, in this circuit for the CT, there is a much higher current, yes, but still there is no current through the relay operating coil and therefore your relay will not operate. So if there is a fault outside of these two CTs, your dis differential relay will not operate. Now let's see what happens if there's a fault here. If that same fault happens here at location F2, you have 1800 amps that need to come in here. So it's still 2000 amps flowing out from here, of which 1800 amp goes in here, and then you have for at F2 condition, then you have only 200 amps flowing out here. So what happens here is, this portion of the circuit still sees 100 amps, but this CT is only seeing 200 amps. So at F2, this current here, because of this CT, is just 10 amps once again. And this is F1, this is at location F2 when a fault occurs. You have 10 amps here. And here, for the circuit to be complete, F2 again needs to be 100 amps. So this is 100, this is 10, there's a current of 90 amps flowing through your relay operating coil. And when your relay operating coil sees a current, that's when your differential relay operates. So in essence, a differential relay scheme is protecting only the equipment that is between the two CTs. And for, for example, if there's, a, if there's a fault here, that would be in a different zone. You would imagine the load has a breaker and that would operate. And that's what we want our differential relay scheme to do. So that is a differential relay scheme. I hope that was clear as well. It's the best we can explain in this time that we have. So if we go back to our question, 
which says which of the following relay uses voltage and current to measure the impedance to the fault that would be nothing but the distance relay where we are measuring the impedance by calculating the ratio of the voltage and the current so our correct answer is is a distance relay and for whatever reason i can't mark here but it is a distance relay so your option c is your correct answer option c is the correct answer and uh, uh, i hope that gave you a good understanding of what a voltage relay is all about what a frequency relay is what a distance relay is and what a differential relay is if it at least a primer on each of these i don't really have a sample question because this is again a more of a conceptual discussion today what i will encourage you to do is pick out at least two other ansi codes that you'd like to understand more about Maybe look at ANSI codes 50 and 51, read about those and let me know in your comment section what those codes are all about. And uh, and there are some uh, prefixes that can and suffixes that go along with these as well. So look at these two relays, read up about, read up about them and uh, leave your uh, comments in the comment section below if you have any questions with reference to any of these four or with reference to 50 and 51. Let me know as well. You can send me an email at nimish at movingelectrons.com. And uh, till next time, take care and have fun.